Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to read The Kissing Hand. It's by Audrey Penn. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please may I stay home with you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently, even if they seem strange and scary at first, but you will love school once you start. You'll make new friends and play with new toys, read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester, what's that? I'll show you, Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand up his arm and into his heart. Even his silly, silky black mask tingled with special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, Mommy loves you, Mommy loves you. And that very, that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now, do be careful not to lose it, she teased him, but don't worry. When you open your hand and you wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and thought, looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand, too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the who owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang, Chester loves you. And there's Chester at school. I think that's a super good book. Next, we're gonna talk about good coloring. So at school, we learn all about good coloring. So we're gonna talk about some things that make good coloring. So the first thing is coloring in the lines. If you can see this first flower I colored, it's not very good because I didn't stay in the lines. This one got a little bit better, but I still kind of scribbled outside of the lines. And this is the best flower because everything, all the color is still inside of the lines. So good coloring means we stay inside the lines. The next thing is that colors make sense. So here I drew a sun and colored it blue. Does that make any sense? Probably not, we don't have a blue sun. Red makes a little bit more sense because red is hot and the sun is hot, but that red is still not the color of our sun, so that still doesn't make sense. And lastly, I colored our sun yellow. 
That makes the most sense, right? We have a yellow sun in our sky. So when we color, we wanna make sure we color inside the lines and our colors make sense. And the last thing we wanna practice is leaving no white spaces. If you see this first tree here, I left a lot of white spaces. That's not very good coloring. Our second tree, I colored it in a little bit more, but you can still see a lot of the white through the paper. And when we practice our good coloring, we want to make sure we leave no white spaces. We color it all in so you see the color everywhere. All right, so that's good coloring. We'll talk about good coloring a little bit more in the next couple of videos too. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the word independence. I want you to think. We can tap, tap, tap our chin and think about what independence means. I'll give you a second to think. If you thought independence means doing things on your own, you are absolutely correct. If you can do something with independence, that means you can do it all by yourself. So I want to, let's brainstorm, that means think in our minds, some things that we can do all by ourselves, or things that we want to be able to do by ourselves. Maybe you can't tie your shoes by yourself yet, but you want to be able to and have that independence. 